Okay, I had a question on how to do this problem from one of my students in my finance class. And I thought I'd go ahead and record a YouTube video on this. And also I was going to show you a couple short methods and also how to use something called the lambda function. So anyway, I got a problem, a problem similar to this from this book here, M Finance. Um, very good book. And also I, I copied these formulas. All these formulas are, you can find them anywhere on the internet. I just took them from this book. Anyway, this is a very good book to use if you're interested in uh, studying undergraduate finance. Um, okay, so let's just go ahead and describe the problem. Uh, we have three economic states. You could have fast growth, slow growth, or recession. So these are things that could happen in the future. And the probability of those happen are 29%, 41%, and 30%. Of course, those probabilities should sum up to 100%. Um, so, um, and if this fast growth happens, we expect the return to be 30%. If it's slow growth, we think it could be 3%. If there's a recession, we think we're going to lose 27%. So the first thing we want to calculate is the expected return of the probability distribution. So that's really easy to do. It's something called, you do something called a uh, weighted average. So it's going to be this times this plus this times this plus this times this. So in, a, in a Excel, there's something called sum product which does this very quickly for you. I think it should be called product sum because it multiplies them first and then it adds it, right? But they call it sum product and that's exactly what we want. And let's go ahead and format that as percent. And Excel has, one thing Excel does is it takes percent and rounds it to zero decimal places. You should always take it out to two places when you put your answer in. And so that's our answer for the first part. Um, I'll go ahead and put the formula in here for you. Now, the second thing we want to do is cal calculate the standard deviation of the probability distribution. In order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and copy this down here so we can take a look at how to do it. And uh, so, if you look, so this was the first equation right here. This is how we calculate this first thing. Now, the second one says to take the return minus the expected return. So we're going to we're going to do this one at a time. This is the formula down here: the return minus the expected return squared times this probability, and you add them all together and take the square root. So I'll show you how to do this very quickly. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is equal to well, the, this return minus this expected return. Now I'm going to go ahead and F4 when I hit this because I don't want this to move when I copy it down. I want to make that an absolute reference. I could type those dollar signs if I want to, but hitting F4 is uh, the easiest way to do that. And now we have all those. Let me put the formula in here as we go so you can see it. So, um, let me get, move all this stuff out of the way. We're just looking at, we're just dealing with this right now. Now I'm going to go ahead and put, what, as we're doing this, so I'm taking uh, the return minus the expected return, right? And so that's the first thing I do. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and go in there and uh, square it. Because that's the next thing it says to do here, to square each one of those. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to go... Uh, put parentheses around this just so, so you see what we're doing and to square it in Excel you just do this little up arrow and square it. so I'll go in here and I'll put parentheses around this and up arrow squared and uh, copy that down so the next thing I want to do is I want to take the times of probability so I'll go here and let me hit escape so I'm gonna go here I'm gonna go to the probability times that right so I'm going to go in here, I'm going to go into the front, I'm going to go this times this. Oops, so we already have that. Times all this stuff right here, right? This times all this. So you can see it kind of looks very similar to that. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and copy that down. So now I have, now these aren't percent anymore because I squared, this is percent in here, but I squared it. So we could probably make that decimal now. It doesn't make sense to have that as, as percent anymore. And let me go ahead and highlight this with that so it looks the same. So the next thing it says to add them all together. So I'm just going to use this auto sum right here. And now I've summed them. And the last thing it says to take the square root. So I'm going to go this equals the square root of this. And we get 21.9. Now that is percent. So I'm going to go ahead. Since it's a standard deviation, you can express as that percent. Of course, you want to take it. You want to take it to... Uh, 
at least a couple decimal places again because when you do percent it rounds it off okay so this is the answer to that part so that, that's as easy as that now I can, I'm going to show you a shortcut formula where you can do that all at once that last part call it the shortcut formula solution. So I'm going to calculate the same thing all in one. I'm going to calculate this all in one. So, I'm going to say, so the first thing you can see, if you look at this, this looks like a sum product, doesn't it? So, um, but first we'll do the expected returns. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do what he did right up here. So I'm going to say equal sum product. And I'm not going to use this stuff here. I'm going to say I just have this up here. So this in this so the sum product of that and now we know we have the same number as we have up here so so then it says to square it well now I gotta take each return and subtract it from it so I'm gonna go to the front I'm gonna take each one of these returns and subtract it now this is where it's kind of cool because since some product is already an array formula it knows to take each each one of these returns and subtract it right and uh, but but really I should I should highlight all of them right so I need to highlight all of them so take all of those and subtract each one from that now the next thing it says here to do is to square it so I'm going to go here and go to the end put parentheses around it and square all that and then finally it's one more sum product right so I'm going to go here I'm going to go equal sum product of uh, all these probabilities. And this and this these numbers that I just did right here, and find that finally the last thing I have to do is I have to take the square root of all that. So I'm going to go equals sqrt, and now if I did it right, let's keep our fingers crossed. It should be the same answer as up there. So let's just go ahead and copy the format and make that percent. Take it out a couple places, so I did get the same answer. So I got lucky there, didn't I? Then I got it. Sometimes you just get lucky, right? So let's copy the formula. Okay, so now one last thing. I'm going to show you how to uh, do something called a lambda function. So a lambda function is something I can do to where, since Excel doesn't have this function built in, unfortunately, you have to do this this way. I'm going to write a function that you can reuse, right? So I'm going to say lambda function. Make a lambda function. Sorry, a lambda function that calculates. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, um, so how do I, let me copy this. Let me just go equal. Yeah, let me copy it. Copy, paste. So, you know what, I'm just going to have to go equals this. That has the formula. All right, so I'm going to say e equals lambda. This will make sense in a second. E equals lambda. So it wants a parameter. So what are the parameters I used to calculate? I just use these two. So we could say probability and uh, return. So those are the probability. Those are the two parameters we're going to use. And how do I calculate it? Well, I'm going to use this, what I have right here. So I'm going to go square root. I'm just going to copy exactly what I have up here, sum product. And then C3 through C5 is what we, we called the probability. Those are the numbers we called right here. See where I said these numbers are probability. So I'm just going to put in probability. All right. And then, uh, and then uh, we're going to go here. And now it says D3 through D5, which is return. So I put in return because that's why I called those numbers right here return. And then minus some product. And then C3 through C5. So it's going to be a probabil probability and return. Close the parentheses twice. Square it and close the parentheses twice again. So let's just double check to make sure we put all these in. So these are the two probability we called these three numbers. Return we called these three numbers. 
So it's the square root of the sum product of probability minus return minus the sum product. And then finally we're going to check it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, these numbers and these numbers. Just to check it to see if it's right. Okay, I had to pause it for a second because I forgot one little apostrophe, one little parenthesis there. You always know you're done when you see a black one at the end, and I forgot that one little parenthesis. So now I can hit enter, and we can see it got the same answer. Now we're not done yet, but we're almost done. So we created a function to do that, but now what we want to do, I want to I want to name this function so I can use it again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here. I'm just going to copy everything up to where I tested it right here. So I'm going to go right click copy and then I'm going to go up here into uh, uh, formulas. Well, let me hit escape. Then I'm going to go into formulas. I'm going to go to name manager and we're going to we're going to create a new name and we'll call it the standard deviation of the uh, let's call it uh, let's call it uh, we'll, we'll call it S STD DEV PR RET. So I'll just call it ST, STD DEV uh, probability di prob distribution. I don't know what to call it. Call it that, right? Call it everyone. Then here I'm going to, I'm going to paste that formula in when I, that it is paste in. And then I'm going to go OK. And I'm going to go close. And now I can go down here and go equals std and see my formula comes up here it asks me for the probabilities which are these three it asks me for the returns and it's these three and if we hit enter it does the same thing so so we basically created a function to calculate it for you anytime uh, just by just by uh, and with no with no programming right no programming at all we just uh all we did was just use something called the lambda function. Now, this lambda function is only available to users with Excel or with Office 365, I believe. So, so anyway, the lambda function is just a. I guess from here down is just a little bit of extra just to show you how to do some things. You could get the problem done just by going this far. So you could take this lambda function now. You could copy that into a worksheet and name it. Now there are actually some things. There's some add-ons now that actually deal with lambda functions you probably start seeing lambda functions a lot more because as you can see they're very powerful i was able to create an excel function without any programming any visual basic or anything i just copied what i did up here and named it something and i was able to do it very quickly so anyway if you like this video my picture can come up you can click on my picture to subscribe give me a thumbs up give me any comments uh, hopefully that was interesting and i'll talk to you later bye